Friends, uh, welcome to this uh, video presentation on NEP 2020 and curriculum and pedagogy. We as teachers, we all have been teaching all through our career. We have been doing our curriculum course design in certain ways and we have been taking care of teaching learning whether we are teaching face to face, online, blended and otherwise also. NEP 2020 stipulates some of the very innovative ways of doing things and I will highlight some of them and uh, therefore it takes care of the holistic and the multidisciplinary perspective that NEP has been talking about. What you see on your screen is that uh, the main thrust so far pedagogic curriculum is concerned. The National Education Policy 2020 talks about Indian culture and values, indigenous knowledge, Bharatiya Gana Parampara, regional and local languages, local dialects at the school level, even in college and university level also teaching in local language, even the professional areas of medical science, engineering and so on and so forth. It talks about pedagogy in context, putting theory into practice, almost 50-50 formulation that 50% should be diverted towards um, internship as well as activities, student engagement and practicum. Multidisciplinary, I'll talk about that, and holistic, interdisciplinary. Already the UGC has the uh, outcome-based learning framework and graduate attributes, which uh, we would also take into consideration. Accreditation of prior learning insofar as uh, skill development is concerned, and transferring the skills or the credits for the skills with evidences available towards uh, putting in more credits and giving exemption to those credits and take towards a certificate, diploma or degree. Skilling and employability is the major issue which is an integral part of uh, teaching learning process and curriculum in NEP 2020. In fact, two have been very important in NEP 2020 that a liberal arts foundation course would be compulsory across the board including professional education uh, which will uh, develop social and life skills, happiness skills and Vocational education and training or skilling and employability would become compulsory part of the, the curriculum across the board. Technology enabled learning is the issue that NEP is talking about to take tell into the mainstream of teaching and learning rather than keeping it as supplementary or complementary. It should be integrated into our teaching learning process. Whether you are teaching face to face, distance, online or blended, these five areas that I have listed, they would be extremely useful to consider in designing the curriculum and courses as also um, designing teaching learning strategies including assessment strategies. How do you transmit knowledge? How do you provide information? How to ensure interaction uh, and negotiation of meaning, individual creation of meaning and development of values and so on and so forth, collaboration for sharing values and mutual respect and development of positive attitude towards uh, a life and uh, society and uh, teaching learning contexts. How to put uh, our own understanding into a reflective practice that reflects on own action and reflects on in action while doing and after doing which is a very powerful strategy to develop higher order learning and how to ensure in our assessment strategies that assimilation has really taken place. There can be three kinds of curriculum design. We have been more dominated by subject-centered design, largely, but there are institutions, uh, professional institutions and otherwise, they have gone beyond that, beyond the subject-centered, subject matter and discipline-based teaching and learning to more learner-centered, individual learner, learning style-oriented and problem-centered teaching and learning. This problem-centered and project-based learning, including portfolios, um, are, have been brought forward to the mainstream of teaching learning in so far as NEP's recommendations are concerned. What you see is uh, three kinds of uh, delivery strategy that we can combine and allocate our credit hours that uh, some of the credit hours we can divert towards self-learning with guided mentoring, some for face-to-face -face learning and face-to-face -face learning should be more towards hands-on experiences, practicum, interaction, engagement, internship. An online collaborative learning could be collaborative projects, uh, which can be project-based learning or problem-based learning or even case-based learning. These three need to be judicially combined, whether one is teaching face-to-face, -face, distance, online, or even blended. And this would be called as blended teaching and learning. Now, a holistic curriculum 
that the NEP is proposing that uh, it is proposing a flexible curricular structures that you see on your screen which will uh, integrate the STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art and mathematics, industry academia linkages insofar as skill development courses are concerned, multiple entry and exit and the four year undergraduate program which is under deliberation uh, under higher education, national higher education qualifications framework talk about multiple entry and exit after one year um, certificate, 40 credits, two years diploma, three years an undergraduate and four years an undergraduate with honors and it can lead to a two years masters or one year master and then the PhD program. Community engagement and service to form compulsory part of the curriculum exercise, research and internship almost 40 credits equivalent in the undergraduate four year program is uh, 40 credits equivalent to research and internship. Environment and value-based education, Indian language, culture and art, skilling and employability and multidisciplinary and holistic education meaning thereby that the students would be allowed to take uh, courses from other disciplines of their choice depending on their requirement, their needs and their choice and those credits will be counted towards one's, one's own degree and uh, multidisciplinarity will be increased because of development of values, uh, attitude, happiness skills. Um, and so also skill based courses uh, which one can expand one's own employability by taking courses from other disciplines. The uh, four year undergraduate program that you see on the screen 160 credit which is under discussion um, which uh, uh, um, uh, nicely combines uh, varieties of uh, disciplinary interdisciplinary core courses, disciplinary and interdisciplinary electives skill enhancements, ability enhancement courses, value addition courses, field-based internship, apprenticeship, community engagement, research and advanced diploma courses from within of course one's own discipline all put together 160 credits though the University of Delhi has gone beyond towards 176 credits in four-year undergraduate program but these broad areas are part of the undergraduate curriculums so also they could form part of the uh, certificate diploma degree programs because of the multiple entry and the exit uh, options available and the student will be uh, acquiring uh, um, credit hours uh, based on these courses which one will be depositing in the academy bank of credits and uh, gradually that uh, uh, if the discipline core meets that uh, a certain level of credits one will be getting degree in that discipline and the university or the college which is uh, uh, providing that um, maximum credit uh, uh, applicable for a discipline would be offering the degree but the student would have the choice uh, to take up courses and therefore in the future more skill based courses would be coming in uh, to the platter to the basket and the curriculum basket course baskets and uh, um, uh, students will be taking up those courses uh, uh, from other disciplines especially which are skill based which will be expanding their employability uh, uh, market. Therefore, a curriculum design um, which we have been following uh, largely and I know many professional institutions, IITs, IIMs, they have been following uh, uh, a very diversified, flexible uh, but structured curriculum design that uh, we conduct a needs analysis and based on uh, many other factors including human resource development requirements, national and regional needs, global developments discipline knowledge structure which is the discipline core, research and development findings, indigenous knowledge base, Bharatiya Gyan Parampara, faculty expertise, the learner's profile and so on and so forth, curriculum based practices. All these lead towards a concept mapping of the program or the courses and which we call as a curriculum blueprint. And the curriculum blueprint is translated into learning outcomes and learning outcomes are associated with the learning activities including apprenticeship that the students will be undertaking to meet those learning outcomes and we have to develop assessment rubrics that the NEP is talking about very diversified expanded assessment rubric strategies that should meet the learning outcomes vis-a-vis -vis those activities. In between we provide resources, we undertake teaching and learning, bring in media and technology. So therefore the uh, discipline, uh, the skill areas that the NEP is talking about broadly I have listed as discipline skills, employability skills, social and life and happiness skills, self-regulated and metacognitive learning skills, technology skills or digital literacy and learning to learn skills. 
21st century skills uh, they've been talking about, the NEP has talked about extensively on 21st century skills, which are basically communication skills, independent learning skills, thinking skills, critical problem solving, creativity, responsibility and ethical skills, leadership skills, digital skills, knowledge management skills, and as I said, self-directed learning, metacognitive skills, self-regulated learning skills, including happiness skills. So therefore, we need to uh, find out the relationship between the curriculum mapping, concept mapping, one, two, the graduate attributes and learning outcomes derived from that, three, the learning activities that we need to engage uh, design and therefore engage students with, including internship, which will carry forward or achieve the learning outcomes and we have to develop authentic tasks and authentic assessment strategies or rubric which will assess those learning outcomes. So therefore we need to integrate between learning outcomes, activities and assessment. Learning outcome one, activities assessment. Learning outcome two, activities assessment. This is possible across any discipline, whether one is teaching language, literature, whether one is teaching professional education or social sciences or management or education, or even um, uh, uh, community development programs. So uh, we need to take the, here is an example matrix in front of you. Uh, we can take up help of uh, any other matrix that you know, uh, uh, which doesn't matter. But what, what is important is that there must be a mapping of the courses and the uh, modules and the units, their learning outcomes, the credit hours, uh, activities and assignments uh, which are associated with that course or the module, learning support that will be provided, the learning resources, print, audio, video and face-to-face -face interaction and the assessment rubric. Once we are clear about this matrix, it will be very easy for us to bring in um, multidisciplinary and, uh, and uh, interdisciplinary and skilling and employability into this with multiple ent entry and exit options available. The resources that we could consider, uh, th there are many resources available uh, in this country. Uh, there are also MOOCs available elsewhere that one can take up also MOOCs to study. But uh, uh, those should be recognized by the statutory bodies of one's own institution. For instance, the MOOC courses, the resources that are available is the, the best and the largest is the SOEM uh, platform with a four quadrant approach as uh, you must be familiar with and uh, uh, the Class Central, uh, which is a nodal agency, international agency list that almost 10 million students have been registered in SOEM, uh, though the highest has been Coursera with 45 million in 2021, and more than 154 universities have accepted credit transfer for courses offered through SOEM. And now it must have increased in 2022 because this is 2021 data. NPTEL, uh, National Program for Technology Enabled Learning, which is a consortium of seven Indian Institute of Technology, which in fact NPTEL is a part of the SOEM uh, program, that uh, the uh, video-based programs uh, courses are being offered through SOEM platform. And uh, the instructional videos in engineering and related subject areas are available, and many have been using this. And uh, so you can also use uh, these vis-a-vis uh, -vis your students for ourselves to study as teachers and for students also to, to recommend. It will be nice that if these courses or these uh, modules are integrated into your, into your course structure and curriculum structure. The UGC has already allowed up to 40% credit hours which one can take from SOEM and other courses and uh, exempt get uh, credit transfer to one's own uh, uh, certificate diploma or degree, especially degree programs. And 60% uh, one can provide uh, through classroom teaching or online or distance learning, which will be leading to a degree. And uh, AICT has uh, developed more than 3,000 virtual internships, which are free of cost, which one can also tap into. Uh, there's a MOOC kit, which is uh, created by IIT Kanpur in 2012. Uh, ARC4 Cloud certification and uh, this is in collaboration with the IIT Roper which is available in six languages. There's an IIT BEX created by IIT Mumbai or Bombay in 2014 by integrating uh, Drupal 8 and Open edX. and uh, this has got four kinds of MOOCs available which you can uh, use Edu MOOCs, Skill MOOCs, Tech MOOCs and Life MOOCs. IIT Bangalore has created in 2014 which, it, which is called IIMBX. Uh, it offers MOOCs courses in various uh, areas of uh, management sciences. 
AG MOOCs, which is an agriculture MOOCs, which was uh, created in 2015 by IIT Kanpur, Commonwealth of Learning, IIM Calcutta, and the University of Agriculture Sciences Raichur. And uh, the MOOCs platform uh, is offering agricultural education to students and uh, with joint certification by IIT Kanpur and the Commonwealth of Learning. The Odisha State Open University created Visabi uh, Semka with the help of Semka, uh, a MOOC on uh, uh, training of academic counselors, which can be very useful uh, for teachers to go through those books, uh, that MOOC, even if one is teaching face to face. There is also a VES Skills MOOC uh, for banking and finance with almost 2.5 million registered users. There is the eVidya Bharati portal, uh, which is providing online resources and online resources, especially for cross-border education delivery or internationalization education. In FlipLet and EPG Parcel of UGC, there have been plenty of resources which are curriculum-based and which are relating to subject or discipline-based, which can also be tapped. But recently, the UGC Ministry of uh, 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 Information Technology um, Electronic Information Technology developed a Common Service Center program, which was uh, inaugurated in July 29, just a few days back. And uh, these are online resources for rural areas, almost 23,000 uh, PG courses and 137 SWIM courses and other courses which are non-engineering courses are listed over there. Almost 5 lakh Common Service Centers in 2.5 lakh village panchayats and others have been established. The student can register, pay a little fee, it was told some 20 rupees or so. The student can register a per day to use that and uh, earn uh, credits vis-a-vis -vis completion of these courses and transfer these course credit completion to their academic bank of credits which, which will be counted towards certification, towards a certificate diploma or degree and therefore credit transfer is very much possible. So friends, uh, I would submit one thing to you that skill development and employability has been a major priority across disciplines vis-a-vis -vis the NEP 2020 to enhance the ability of the graduates for self-employment or even employment in the public and private sector, including NGOs and international organizations. I would submit to you the consideration of micro-credential courses, which are small bits of skill-based courses which students can take up to compensate or to enhance their employability skills. These are small courses focusing on skill sets mapped into qualifications framework and the qualifications framework are mapped uh, alongside the national higher education qualifications framework which is compatible with national skills qualifications framework. The focus is on training for world of work and developing additional professional skills which will be useful for the graduates. They will enhance the employability skills which are benchmarked against the industry frameworks because uh, now it is coming up that the, the skill-based uh, curriculum should be developed in collaboration with industry and in conformity with the national skills qualifications framework and the students will be able to show evidence-based uh, assessment and therefore award is possible and micro-credential course credits could also be transferred to one's own certificate diploma or degree. So far pedagogy is concerned, I have listed quite a few which you could consider and integrate depending on your discipline and the subject area and the level of the students and the context that they are because context and language and culture are very important to one's own teaching and learning. And therefore, Bharatiya Gyan Parampara and Indian indigenous knowledge based on our culture and tradition and our indigenous knowledge should be brought into insofar as curriculum and course contents are concerned and insofar as pedagogic strategies are also concerned, which could be context and culture specific, preferably in mother language or one's own regional language at least. They could also be in English or any other language. Project-based learning, I'm emphasizing this project-based learning because these uh, facilitate in developing skills for very minute project tasks in their implementation and that students in the process learn certain skills which they would minutely do based on say, research evidences. These are policy research, this could be any kind of projects that they will be doing. Case-based learning, besides project-based le project learning, I must also note that we should consider problem-based learning. So the problem-based learning and project-based learning should be brought to the forefront, which we are considering much less, except that in like a master's dissertation or a project or intensive project, but this should form an integral part of teaching learning process all through the year or the semester. 
Case-based learning, working on a case or a problem with guided inquiry, with mentoring support provided by the teacher and collaborative learning and teamwork and experience sharing, uh, which the students can undertake, they would learn higher order skills based on these. E-portfolio, portfolio as well as e-portfolio. This is a very important, most probably for me, the best strategy that we can bring in, that the students can create their own portfolio, which they would showcase as an evidence of the application of their relevant skills that they have learned. They reflect on their experience and situations, integrate into academic learning with uh, lived experiences, which uh, today is detached that our academic teaching is uh, diverse from the actual context of uh, living or society or community. They must be integrated and they could do a digital compilation of work experiences or achievements. To continue pedagogies, uh, we should also consider competency-based learning, uh, which is possible in any discipline. This is simply mastering a set of skills in one course before moving to the next. That is the application of knowledge in practical situations and those competencies could be based on the learning outcomes. Conversational learning or learning through dialogue which is very much possible online. I have brought in say for instance an online model or any proprietary LMS platform discussion forum interaction where collaboration, reflection, experimentation, active engagement by sharing application in local context is very much possible because the students will bring in their experiences from their local context which other students will get enriched. So combining theory and skills and combining theory and skills on the one hand and the lived experiences of the students um, bringing uh, the, the experiences from their own context, this will be very enriching insofar as collaborative learning, cooperative learning is concerned. Uh, finally, I have listed self-regulated learning and metacognitive learning, which we must consider very seriously, uh, that the students would be uh, taking charge of their own learning, uh, facilitated by the teacher. That the students would, uh, teacher's responsibility would be to develop the skills and competencies of the students, that they will take charge of their learning, they will set goals, they will manage their time, they will decide what help is needed, they will search resources, choose learning strategies, their own learning strategies suitable to them, reflect on them, evaluate their learning outcomes. Meaning thereby that the students will take full control of their learning, they will monitor their own progress and they will focus on learning outcomes. All the process is facilitated and mentored by the teacher. What you see on your screen is a representation collation of the, the learning outcomes starting from knowledge understanding till creativity level and finally the constructivist learning that the students engagement with the context in learning the way one would like to learn or one is uh, proficient to learn. So depending on one's own ability that the learning task will be designed and context would be provided to the students that they will, they will best engage um, uh, efficiently and effectively in that process of learning. Knowledge could be multiple choice questions, understanding, oral examination, poster presentation, application through case study, analysis, course essays. Essays are very important in teaching and learning besides multiple choice tests. Creativity by project-based learning and problem-based learning, which I have already talked about. And constructivist learning, for me, would be best possible. In fact, the research says it is best possible through developing portfolios, including e-portfolios. So finally, to conclude, friends, that I will uh, spend a few seconds on portfolios, different kinds of portfolios that we can bring forward to our learning, including school-level learning, as well as college and university learning across the board, social sciences, humanities, commerce and management, and uh, education, um, other uh, communities to development courses, so also professional courses of engineering, medicine, pharmacy, and so on, and architecture. Developmental port portfolios, which are very much subject uh, specific uh, portfolios. Planning portfolio, which is an entry level early ability mapping of the students, that the uh, students, uh, you could call them as uh, prior knowledge assessment or something like that. A proficiency portfolio, the graduate attributes and the outcomes, learning outcomes which are joined together in a learning journal or a diary or called a portfolio. Showcase portfolio, the evidence which uh, uh, can collect and collate the best of the works of the students and the graduates. Employability portfolio, that the, the, the ability, the readiness and ability for, uh, of the students to do a particular job or work or a varieties of uh, work contexts and success 
potential portfolio which is required for admission to the next grade. So friends, to conclude what I have said uh, very briefly in this program, I have highlighted that we need to reconsider and uh, qualitatively enhance our curriculum and course design and our pedagogies that will be used in uh, uh, translating courses into, into action, uh, uh, engaging students more, reflecting uh, on their engagement, uh, facilitating students to reflect on their engagement and bring in more multidisciplinary courses, especially skill-based courses from other disciplines, even knowledge-based courses from other disciplines, value-based courses from other disciplines that the students would like to take up and we should also design in such a way multiple entry and exit is possible. There are plenty of resources, some of them important that I have quoted over here, mentioned here, that the students need to be engaged with and teachers need to bring those uh, resources and build those resources into their teaching and learning within the classroom or even outside the classroom or at a distance or online and blended learning. And uh, finally, I must submit to you that uh, uh, it needs a holistic planning of uh, uh, curriculum and course design so for the holistic development of the students. I hope that you found this useful. You must read the NAP uh, more and some of the good practices that are coming up from different institutions from time to time to ensure that we are very much uh, at what uh, exactly we need to do insofar as our own curriculum design and pedagogic design and teaching learning is concerned. Thank you very much.